Hi children, good morning. Welcome to our next class. In last class, you learned about the transport system in animals and plants. And in that, you learned about the importance of blood, the functions of blood, and what are the different types of blood cells you learned, right? And in today's class, before knowing what topic we are going to discuss, uh, just uh, we will revise the respiration lesson once as it has a connection with the transportation. So you all know that our body need food, water and oxygen compulsory to live. So this oxygen is uh, helping to break down the glucose and releasing energy in our body, right? So after releasing that energy, then how does this digested nutrients are passed on to the each and every part of the cell or else how this oxygen is transported to each and every part of the cell that is only you are going to learn in this lesson so here to take oxygenated blood oxygenated blood means the blood which has oxygen blood plus oxygen known as oxygenated blood or pure blood so this need to transport to each and every part of the cell and at the same time the waste materials are produced in uh, different parts of the body and that should be collected even along with the carbon dioxide has to be collected and should send out from the body. So that is the blood which contain carbon dioxide, blood plus carbon dioxide known as impure blood are deoxygenated blood. So this deoxygenated blood should come back to the heart and from the heart it goes to the lungs for purification. So this is all done by the help of blood vessels. So the blood vessels today we are going to discuss about blood vessels. The blood vessels are taking an important role in circulatory system. Circulation means the transportation of nutrients and oxygen throughout the body is also known as circulatory system. So in circulatory system, how the blood is taking important role, same way the blood vessels are also important. So which blood vessels are helping to do this function we will understand now. The first thing is from the heart, the pure blood has to transport to each and every part of the body. So that work is done by a type of blood vessels known as arteries. We will call them as arteries. So these arteries are carrying pure blood. They are carrying pure blood from heart to different parts of the body. They are red in color. They are red in color and they are carrying pure blood from heart to different parts of the body. And the blood moves with a pressure, high pressure, the blood is moving in arteries. How the blood is moving in arteries? With high pressure, the blood is moving in arteries. How can we say that the blood move with pressure in the arteries? To understand, you can do one small activity for that you with your right hand, index finger and the middle finger, both the fingers, you place it on your left hand wrist inner side. Left hand wrist part inner side, you place your index finger and middle finger, just little press gently and see you can feel some thrombing sound. Yes, you all can do this activity. You are, are you feeling some thrombing sound? Yes, this thrombing sound is only known as pulse. This thrombing sound called as pulse. So you count this thrombing sound, your pulse for one minute. How many times the pulse is beating for one minute that is known as pulse rate. That is known as pulse rate. 
your pulse rate is having connection with your heart beat generally in healthy person early morning when you get up from the bed that means when you are resting time your pulse rate will be 70 to 80 times per minute so to read the blood pressure in blood vessels we use a sphygmomanometer sphygmomanometer this machine is used this sphygmomanometer is used to read the blood pressure normal blood pressure in human beings is 120 by 80 so by using this sphygmomanometer we can understand that the blood is moving with high pressure in arteries so to know the blood pressure we are using and the normal blood pressure for human beings is 120 by 80 okay so this blood vessels are red in color and carries pure blood and the, the blood moves with high pressure in this blood vessels that means arteries and they have thick walls they have very thick walls why because they need to bear the pressure of the blood pressure, blood is moving with pressure in these uh, blood vessels that's why their walls are very thick so now you understood about one type of blood vessels now we'll see the other type of blood vessels what are present in circulatory system what are the other types of blood vessels so the next type of blood vessels are veins they carry impure blood opposite to the arteries they are carrying impure blood impure blood means just now you understood that the blood which has carbon dioxide deoxygenated blood also we can say so from where does these blood vessels are collecting the impure blood they are collecting the impure blood from different parts of the body and they are bringing back to the heart okay so they are uh, not having high pressure blood the blood is not moving with high pressure and the arteries are red in color whereas veins are blue in color they are blue in color and blood is not moving with high pressure not moving with high pressure and also here arteries having thick walls because to bear the pressure of blood whereas veins have thin walls they are not having very thick walls like arteries and one more thing is in the wall the in the veins they are having walls they have walls in the veins these walls are helping to allow the blood to flow only in one direction that they are not allowing the two directions they allow the blood to flow only towards the heart and from heart to lungs so back flow of blood to prevent they are having walls in your home when uh, your taps will have walls right when you open the valve only you will get the water from your tap same way the veins are having the walls and they are not allowing the blood to flow backwards they are allowing the blood to flow towards heart only one direction unidirectional way they are allowing whereas in arteries there are no walls at all no walls because the blood is from the heart flowing to the different parts of the body compulsory has to reach to all the parts of the body here in the veins they have impure blood if no wall there is a chance to mix up with impure blood and pure blood so to stop that veins are having walls so these are the two blood vessels are helping a lot in our circulatory system along with this 
we are also having one more type of blood vessels they are capillaries the third type of blood vessels are capillaries now we'll see what's the meaning of capillaries and how they are forming the capillaries are formed when an artery when an artery divides when it reaches to the tissue when artery reaches to the tissue it redivides and form into very thin tubes artery is redividing and forming into very thin tubes these thin tubes are only known as capillaries so here these thin tubes are only known as capillaries from where these thin tubes are forming from the artery when artery when artery reaches to the tissue where it is reaching tissue what's the meaning of tissue a group of cell with same function with same structure the group of cells forms a tissue so whenever the one artery the blood vessel which is pumping pure blood this artery when it reaches to the tissue then it is redividing into very thin tubes we are calling with them as capillaries so here exchange of oxygen into the blood takes place okay exchange of oxygen it gives the oxygen into tissue and uh, it takes the carbon dioxide from the tissues and again these all these thin tubules are forming the veins they are connecting to the veins so here in the capillaries the exchange of oxygen between blood and the tissues taking place with the help of capillaries the thin tubes which are arising from the artery known as capillaries okay now once we will see the schematic diagram of our heart a simplified diagram of our heart we will see how it's working actually from where to where the blood is moving this we will see now a schematic diagram of heart we are seeing now this is heart so from the heart the pure blood or oxygenated blood is supplied by arteries arteries are taking pure blood from heart to different parts of the body and the near the tissue they are redividing and forming very thin tubules known as capillaries so the blood enters into the capillary and in here again the exchange of gases taking place oxygen enters into the tissue and again these thin thin tubules are uniting and forming the veins so the impure blood is collected in the vein so these veins are carrying impure blood or deoxygenated blood again back to the heart so from the heart where does this impure blood goes you all know that in respiratory system you learned that in the alveoli the exchange of gases takes place oxygen comes inside and they uh, send back the carbon dioxide outside that carbon dioxide is released through the nostrils outside this all happening that is that means the blood is getting purified in which part there it's getting purified it is in your lungs so this impure blood is transported to the lungs Impure blood is getting transported to the lungs. 
Here again, one more blood vessel is taking an important role. That's known as pulmonary pulmonary vein. Pulmonary sorry, pulmonary artery. So the impure blood from the heart is take to is taken to the lungs. Which blood vessel is taking? Pulmonary artery is taking. What type of blood it is taking? Impure blood. From where to where it is taking? From heart to the lungs. Okay, you should understand. Actually artery means they are carrying only pure blood. Okay, till now you understood that. Artery means red in color. They carry only pure blood you learnt. But here, whenever the impure blood from the heart, whenever the impure blood is taken to lungs, that means whenever the pulmonary word comes in front of the artery, you should remember that this pulmonary artery is taking impure blood. As its nature, artery nature is to carry the pure blood. But again is to that, the pulmonary artery is carrying impure blood from heart to the lungs. And in the lungs, exchange of gases takes place, blood gets purified and the purified blood again comes to heart. So here which, which blood vessel is helping? Pulmonary Pulmonary vein is helping. Actually vein means here we discussed that veins are blue in color and they carry impure blood, deoxygenated blood they carry. This all you learnt. But here opposite function it is doing. When it's bringing from the lungs to the heart, it is, they are bringing pure blood. Whenever in front of the vein, pulmonary comes, you should understand that, that blood vessels are coming from lungs to the heart. Okay. So, the pulmonary vein is carrying pure blood from lungs to the heart. Purified blood is carried from lungs to the heart. This is a simplified diagram of your heart. From where to where the blood is moving. Where does it get purified and how again it's coming back you learnt. In detail we will learn about the structure of heart and the different blood vessels present in that we will discuss in tomorrow's class again. Okay, so here one more difference between arteries and veins are your arteries are placed Deeply inside your body. Arteries are placed deep inside the body. Deeply they are placed inside the body. Whereas your veins are placed superficially they are placed. Veins are superficially placed. What's the meaning of superficially? That means they are not very deep inside the body. You can see the blue color blood vessels moving just under the skin. Those are veins. So now in today's class, you learned about the different blood vessels, their functions, their differences and a just a simple model of the heart, how it's working. Once quickly we will revise. There are two different blood vessels in our body. One is arteries, the other one is veins. Arteries are red in color, whereas veins are blue in color. Arteries carry pure blood and veins carry impure blood. Pure blood means oxygen plus blood. Oxygen, when it contains carbon dioxide, that, that is impure or deoxygenated blood. And in arteries, the blood is moving with high pressure. We did an activity 
to know the height, how the blood is moving in the arteries to understand how to count the pulse rate you study. So this activity you do with your family members and note down the pulse rates of your elders and youngers and with yours also. And try to find out is there any difference between your pulse rate to your elder pulse rate and the younger one pulse rate compare this. Okay. And the next one arteries have very thick walls and uh, whereas veins are having thin walls. And here arteries do not have any walls whereas veins are having walls. And the arteries are deeply placed inside whereas veins are superficially placed. Along with this we have capillaries. Whenever the artery reaches to the tissue, they, it gets redivided into thin tubules and form the capillaries. So here the exchange of oxygen between blood and the tissue takes place. And uh, this is the simple diagram. So your today's homework children, your home assignment is draw the diagram of a schematic diagram of your heart. Draw the schematic diagram, a simplified diagram. Draw the schematic diagram of your heart and label it. And the formation of capillaries you draw and label it. These two diagrams are your home assignment children. And in tomorrow's class, we'll discuss about the structure of heart and the functions of heart. Thank you.